Hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwad. In this video, I'm going to explain how your homocysteine levels, how that affects your thyroid. Now, high homocysteine levels in the bloodstream will affect the thyroid because homocysteine, it's an inflammatory marker. Now, with the blood labs that I do, I always check for two inflammatory markers. One is C-reactive protein and the other is homocysteine levels because homocysteine, what that does that affects the endothelial lining in the arterial wall. So what is homocysteine? Homocysteine is an amino acid that can be generated in response to a toxic or nutritionally deficient diet. Now when it comes to lab ranges, I explain to my patients that the lab ranges for homocysteine, it's like, uh, it's like cholesterol. Too little is bad and too high is bad. So I always look for a level between seven and nine because if it's higher, it causes systemic inflammation, systemic diseases which can lead to heart disease and heart attacks, strokes, okay, too much homocysteine levels in the blood. Also too, neurodegeneration. This is the brain stuff, okay, you have inflammation in your system which actually shrinks the brain and this leads to situations like Alzheimer's and dementia if your homocysteine levels go chronically high. Also very important, it blocks a T3 hormone from entering the cell. So this is where you get thyroid resistance. This is where all the blood labs come back within normal limits. However, you're still experiencing low thyroid symptoms. It could be due to the fact that you have high homocysteine levels, which is giving you a thyroid resistant panel. Okay, so why does all this happen? Now there's many reasons why it can happen, but I'm just gonna break it down to three reasons. Very important, one, the MTHFR genetic factor. Now what is MTHFR? This is methyl, Methylene tetrahydrofolate, okay, what this basically does, it breaks down B9, folate, and folic acid into its active form. Now, when you break down your B vitamins into its active forms, then they can be utilized, whether it be B9 or B12. So, it metabolizes folate and folic acid. Now, we need essentially B vitamins for the function of the nervous system. Poor diet malabsorption of B vitamins. Now we need the B vitamins for stomach acid. We need our stomach acid, the pH, to be anywhere between one and three, okay? Because we need that acidity in there to help break down the food products for the food constituents, especially for the absorption of the amino acids that are needed. And if, you're, if you have a bad diet and you don't have enough stomach acid, this is where you're gonna have malabsorption of B vitamins. And this is where the, this is where the, um, the homocysteine levels are gonna, uh, elevate. Also too, the liver. The liver, homocysteine is metabolized in the liver. So if you're not breaking down the B vitamins, okay, the homocysteine levels are coming up, the liver is going to be overworked. Now remember, thyroid hormone, T4, in T4, 93% of T4 is produced in the, in the thyroid gland, 7% is produced in active form. That inactive T4 has to get converted to active T3 in the liver. So if your liver is being, is being taxed by the high homocysteine levels in your bloodstream, okay, then this is where you're going to get low-functioning thyroid. So if you do test positive for the MTHFR uh, genetic factor, there's two types. There's the B9 and there's the B12. This is where I recommend with, myself, with my patients to get methylfolate because that's B9 already in the active form. Stay away from breads. Stay away from anything enriched. Anything enriched is bad. Also, I do methylcobalamin. Now, cobalamin is B12. So this is already in the active form. Now, let's just say you don't know if you are positive for the MTHFR gene to begin with. I say as a precautionary matter, when you're taking in vitamins, get the methylfolate, get the methylcobalamin anyways, okay? If you have a bad diet due to poor stomach acid, this is already in this active form, so you will absorb the B9 and the B12 into your system because the B9 and B12 is good for the nervous system, okay? So again, so if you have high, high homocysteine levels in your blood due to, again, a bad diet, due to the genetic, the, the genetic factor, due to a poor functioning liver, this is where you're getting a low functioning thyroid, okay? So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Hello, this is Dr. Juwad. Please subscribe to my channel for more up-to-date videos, and thanks for watching.